Hello, I'm Roy Underhill. In Old Norse, the word beak meant a bay or a fjord, and those who dwelt on the edge of the fjord were called beakings or vikings. Quick update here guys, uh, three things to go over real fast, if I can get your attention here for just a minute, if you clicked on this video. Uh, the first thing is, I'm here working on the kiln today, putting up these doors, as you can see them behind me, got the doors going in today, if I don't knock something over. But anyways, I'm working on the kiln today, and I'll have a video out probably this evening or sometime tonight on the next stage in the process of building this kiln, which includes the final steps of putting the insulation in. Uh, painting the inside a little bit of uh, information on the vents and now we're starting on the doors So we're almost to the finish line on this kiln. Okay, the second thing is is a q and a I've been getting a lot of emails and a lot of questions on Instagram on tree saw milling uh, Log in this kiln and stuff like that and I'm probably gonna do a q and a video probably this weekend So if you have any questions to ask me about what I do here this whole process of my business at the sawmill the logging the woodworking or anything you see on this channel, then leave me a comment below, or if you want to keep it private, and that's understandable, you can send me an email, and I'll try my best to answer it that way. The humidity is horrible today. Constantly having to clean my glasses off here. Anyways, where was we? And the third thing, axes. Now, if you look on YouTube, you look up axes or axe handles or just anything to do with an axe, you'll find about a million videos over every topic there is. And that's why I've never done a lot of videos on that subject because there's tons of content out there. I think Radler Star did 10 different videos on how to put an axe handle on. And he'll probably do more before it's over with. But anyways, I love a good axe as anybody else. I have a ton of them. I go to the flea market all the time looking for them. If you follow us on Instagram, I usually put those on there when I find them. I probably have over 100, 150 old vintage axes and a lot of them we still use. Uh, but I said all that to say this, I got a really cool axe in the mail the other day. I wanted to share it with you guys. This package came from Black Bear Forge, and he's over in Colorado. John Switzer is his name. He is the blacksmith out of that forge. And I think I pronounced it right, Switzer, I believe. You look him up on Instagram or on Facebook, he puts a ton of content out there, and he started a YouTube channel also. It was blacksmith and his one uh, art that I'm really interested in, and hopefully one day when I have some free time, I probably never gonna have free time, but one day hopefully I can find the time to find me an old anvil and maybe start doing some forging here. I mentioned how bad the humidity is. So anyways guys, we've got a new axe and we got to put a handle on it. Now, this is the first piece I've gotten from John. He posted this axe on Facebook a few weeks ago. No, Instagram, I'm sorry. And it was, uh, I think it was meant to be a, a larger axe. The blade was meant to be larger, but he said he had some issues in the finishing process, which made it kind of smaller. But what's very funny about this is this was the exact style of axe that I've been looking for for a long time. I'm gonna put a video up here and it may not work. And if it does, then I'll put some still shots on where I saw an axe like this being used a while back. Both strength and beauty. The precise miters strengthen the end of the log and keep it from breaking off, as well as making for a very tight looking joint. Again, the carpenters work entirely with their axes, chopping and shaving the joints to a precise shape determined by centuries of experience. Now that was a clip from the Woodwright shop, I think season five. Now if I'm not right about that, I'll put it somewhere on this video telling you what season that was in. But are you guys interested in sawmill and woodworking and just forestry altogether, which is really the uh, backbone of all these kinds of work is forestry, uh, Roy Underhill was the best resource I've ever found on education and learning this stuff. And you can buy the seasons of the Woodwright shop. I think he's got 25 plus years he's been doing that show. 25. Let's see, 80. 
maybe 35. It's a long time he's been doing it, put it that way. He still does a season every fall, and you can get on pbs.com or .org or whatever it is, and you can watch them for free. But anyways, he was over in Norway doing some uh, timber framing and some log cabin building with a group of old uh, Vikings there from Sweden, or I call them Vikings, they're from Norway, I'm assuming they're Viking heritage. But they were using this style axe, and I just really, really was digging it. I just really got excited when I saw it. I had never saw an axe like that being used for what it was being used for, and it really looked like, it really, uh, it really favored a mortise axe, which is made for cleaning out mortises and timber framing. But they were using it as kind of like a, a carpenter's axe, more than a mortise axe, because it didn't, it lacked the robust uh, size that a mortise axe has. It's a, a mortise axe is a lot thicker. And this axe that I just showed in the video here was more like an axe you would use for uh, carpentry work. So anyways, here it is. And this thing is fantastic. Uh, if, you, if you see those guys over in Norway and Sweden, they, they build Viking ships. They're on Facebook and Instagram. They put videos up all the time. And they're still riving out timber and oak by hand and making Viking ships. And this is the same style axe, one of the same style axes they use over there when building those ships. And I actually, uh, I actually emailed those guys a few months ago and they have their own blacksmith over there that made them. And I was kind of thought about getting one, but the cost on shipping was really expensive. But John came along and posted this and uh, kind of took that need away. So here it is, right here. Got a little protector over there he sent with it to protect the blade. Some fantastic work there on the edge. A mirror polished finish is whatever brand new axe that you purchase should come with if the maker knows what they're doing and if they care about quality. Now if you go to Tractor Supply, you ain't gonna get that or Lowe's, but if you buy from a blacksmith, that's what you should see on the edge. Mirror polish. Put this on before I get cut. This thing is extremely sharp. But anyways, it's a, it's got a very small pole on the back. There's the place for the handle to come through. He's got his maker's mark on there for Black Bear Forge. We'll talk about this axe a little bit more when we put the handle on it. But uh, I said all that to say this, I have two choices for the handle material. I have ash or hickory. And I don't really care either way which one goes on it cause I got plenty of wood to replace it years down the road whenever it fails. So what would you guys like to see, ash or hickory for a handle? Because there's tons of videos out there where people put hickory handles because they're the most sought after handle. And if you go to the hardware store, that's what you're going to see is hickory. I've never went to a hardware store in Tennessee and saw ash as an option for handle material. So let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see me put a handle on this. I'm sure you will. I don't know why you wouldn't. And on top of that, let me know what kind of wood you think I should use. And whoever has the most votes for ash versus hickory is what I'll use. So uh, once again, ash or hickory, you guys be the judge. And that's what we'll do here. I'm also getting into leather work just a little in the past year. And I'll try to make a sheath for this axe also. We'll see how that goes. So anyways, uh, questions in, down in the box below if you have something on the q and I'm going to do this weekend. And uh, ask your hickory for this little small axe. I'll leave that down below also, and we'll see you guys in a, hopefully by this evening on the next kiln video.